entropy we are going to start a session 5 again the steam boilers under unit 2 so in the previous sessions uh, we have discussed on uh, the boilers then the different uh, types of boilers we have seen and in the <clears throat> previous session uh, we have seen Lancashire boiler and a locomotive boiler so in today's session uh, we will see the some more types of boilers uh, so in the today's session especially in the session 5 I am going to explain high pressure boilers right? so what you mean by high pressure boilers and why we are going to use the high pressure boilers and what are the advantages of high pressure boilers when we compare this with the the low pressure boilers right so the uh, high pressure boilers uh, mainly we come up with high pressure boilers uh, uh, to overcome the disadvantages of low pressure boilers right so what are those disadvantages of low pressure boilers and how we are going to overcome those disadvantages uh, from the low pressure boilers to a high pressure boilers so the some of the advantages of high pressure boilers uh, we will see it here the scale formation is eliminated since water is circulated with a high velocity through the tubes you know in the previous uh, <clears throat> boilers what we studied this till now those are all uh, the low pressure boilers right so in the low pressure boilers what happens the water flows slowly it means the velocity of the water inside the tube is slow when it is slow the impurities and sediments present in the water are gets deposited on the inner surface of the uh, tubes. So that will again create the back pressure. Right. So that is the scale formation will takes place. So during the maintenance or repair works, you need to replace those tubes again and again here in the low pressure boilers so to eliminate such disadvantages so we are coming with the high pressure boilers in the high pressure boiler what happens <clears throat> the water is circulated with high velocity through the tubes when the water flows with a high velocity then the deposition of impurities on the inner surface of the the tubes will not happen here so that we can deposition can be eliminated when we use the high pressure boilers the high pressure boilers means the feeding of the water inside the tubes <coughs> takes place with the help of a uh, centrifugal pump when you use a centrifugal pump with the help of a centrifugal pump the water is forced so i can say the forced uh, water the forced convection here the forced water enters inside the tubes <clears throat> forced water means the velocity is more so when the velocity is more the deposition time taken by the impurities or sedimentations presence inside the water is not at all possible so so that can be uh, avoided by using the high pressure boilers then high pressure and high temperature steam can be obtained so this increases efficiency of the plant the high pressure means the water is <coughs> sent inside the boiler with high pressure when the pressure is high the temperature is also high so the when the inlet water temperature itself is high then what the steam we are getting at the end of this boiler is also a superheated steam so thereby we can increase the efficiency of the power plant <coughs> The efficiency of the plant increased up to 42 percent so when you compare this with the low pressure boiler so the efficiency of this high pressure boilers is increased up to 42 percent so it has less number or complete elimination of drums so like the drums you can eliminate drums completely because whenever the steam is generated directly you can use that steam for your applications so such a fast the steam is generated so but in the case of a low uh, pressure boilers you need to store the steam in a drum so that drum you can eliminate in the high pressure boiler so less floor space is reduced the, the floor space required here is very less here so then less uh, foundation cost due to lighter weight of tubes the foundation cost is also very less because the since this is a portable one the space required is less since the space required is less then the foundation cost is also reduced because of the the tubes used in this cases are also lighter in weight then next gas and air leakages are reduced the gas or air leakages you can reduce in the high pressure boilers 
increased rate of production increased rate of production means the production of the steam that is the superheated steam can be increased in this case right so why it is increased because the water is uh, pressurized here with the high pressure water enters there when it enters with the high pressure then the temperature is more so e quickly the water gets converted into a steam so that is increased rate of production a rapid start from cold is possible you can start rapidly whenever there is a load fluctuation takes place in such cases you can start rapidly then steam can be raised quickly to meet variable load requirements so whenever the load uh, varies uh, from the customer end or consumer end you can say the consumer end so you can easily start up the boiler so you can easily uh, generate the required steam very quickly whenever there is a load variations are exist then there are some disadvantages of the high pressure boilers because when some advantages are there then definitely uh, there will be some disadvantages also so the disadvantages are if the water flow is insufficient the tubes are possible to be overheated the water flow in in the tubes you need to supply frequently if there is a delay in the flow of water in the tubes or if the water is insufficient the tubes are overheated overheated because the the few gases are running on on the uh, tubes if the few gases are running if there is a deficit of water inside the tube then definitely the overheating of uh, tubes takes place here then uh, <clears throat> then high <clears throat> pressure boilers can function on liquids or gases fuels high pressure boilers can function on liquids or gases for liquids and gases fuels are used <clears throat> in the case of high pressure boilers bubble formation is taking place at the inner surfaces of the tube which reduces the heat transfer rate there is some bubble formation takes place <clears throat> inside the tube because suddenly the the water gets converted into the <clears throat> steam in the pipe itself because there is no storage or there is no drum provided in the high pressure boilers so during that <clears throat> during uh, that uh, what happens is the bubble formation takes place in the tubes itself so the, the heat transfer rate is also a less here so next we will see la mount boiler la mount boiler is one of the example for high pressure boiler right now we will see what are the main parts of the la mount boiler and also the working of la mount boiler the main parts are economizer centrifugal pump operator tube grate furnace superheater air free heater these are all the components so it means la mount boiler consists of economizer centrifugal pump operator tube grate furnace superheater air free heater now i will tell you why the economizer is used the economizer is used to increase the efficiency of the boiler <coughs> the later stage i can explain how the economizer works while explaining the working of a la mount boiler then the centrifugal pump is used to uh, send the water inside the boiler with high pressure centrifugal pump is used to uh, uh, send the water with high pressure inside the boiler the operator tube the operator tube means this is a tube wherein the operation of the water takes place the grate <coughs> grate you know already on the, the grate is the platform where you are going to burn the fuel the furnace is a total it's a vertical a vertical column the furnace so wherein total arrangement of these uh, components will be there so then this is called as the furnace furnace means this you can say this 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 total this this is total is a furnace from here to here this totally it is a furnace then superheater superheater is <coughs> used wherein the dry saturated steam is sent to the superheater where the superheater again that steam is gets converted into superheated steam so then air preheater air preheater is also one of the accessories of the uh, boiler <coughs> wherein uh, it increases the efficiency of the boiler air preheater the name itself says that you are going to heat the air before sending it to the furnace so that is what it is called as air preheater then the air is passed at the top of the chimney so that passed air you can use it in the fire grate so that the uh, <clears throat> instead of using the cold air directly from the atmosphere you can use it 
the uh, uh, heated air from the air free heater so these are all the components now while coming for the working of this now so here there's a feed water is the so this is called as a feed pump this is a feed pump so this feed pump wherein the water is sent to the feed pump this feed pump this the water is increased the high pressure this pump output will give the high pressure water that high pressure water it ascends to the <coughs> it sent to the <coughs> the economizer it sent to the economizer what economizer will do is so when it goes to the economizer it is circulating here in the economizer is placed uh, on the way of the flue gases so the flue gases are flowing from the bottom from the fire grate to the chimney so this the totally it will flow in the vertical direction so it is placed at the top of uh, uh, the boiler here so so here the when water passes here so it extract the heat from the flue gases so this water is sent to the this water is sent to the storage and separating drum here <coughs> it is storage and separating drum it will send to the storage and separating drum so next what happens from here from here so what he is showing this is a superheater so when it comes from the economizer so when it enters the storage and separating drum so half of the <coughs> water gets converted into a steam now so that steam is sent here that steam is sent here through the uh, superheater wherein this superheater is also is in the space of the flue gases again there is a heat exchange takes place again that steam is gets converted into a superheated steam so when it comes like this so like this again it is connected directly to the main steam so main steam means directly it gets converted into a superheated steam so that superheated steam you can take it or extract from the main steam so the main steam so that is extracted here then that is sent to the further applications right this is the one more thing then what happens here now you are having circulating pump so whenever the water is stored here in the storage and so this is a separated drum from here by using the circulating pump once again you are sending it to the distributing header so this distributing header it distributes the water uh, from <coughs> this storage uh, storage um, drum to again to the combustion chamber so like this it is taking from the bottom to the top here again in a circular fashion like this where he has shown here the hot gases again it circulates here once again it enters the drum so when it enters drum means during this circular motion like this this is called as a convective this is taking place in the convective fashion so convection you know where the heat transfer takes place uh, uh, from uh, uh, particle to particle here so there heat transfer takes place in the convective manner so then once again the this water gets converted into a steam once again that converted steam is sent back to the storage drum there from this storage drum again it enters the superheater where in the superheater again it convert, gets converted into a superheated steam and that goes to the main steam so this is how it works this is the working of the Lamont boiler. So in the Lamont boiler, main you have to understand the concept. So in the low pressure boilers, the water e enters the boiler naturally. The natural convection takes place in the case of low pressure boiler. But in the case of high pressure boiler, we are forcing the water. The forced circulation is present in the high pressure boiler. The forced circulation means you need to uh, use the pump here so whenever you use the pump then that pumps the water with high pressure so that high pressure water enters the uh, boiler here so that is very important difference between the low pressure boiler and the high pressure boiler here so this is the working of the law mount boiler so now i'll explain once again so now here also there is a fan is there and air is there so air enters with this fan so then it air from the atmosphere enters the fan again when the air coming out of this fan again it has some high velocity it enters the air free heater here air free heater means <coughs> wherein the so wherein uh, there is a 
um, heat exchange takes place so right flue gases from fire grate the combustion chamber it goes along the way to the chimney so in the way of the chimney so there is a air free heater is fixed the air with the high pressure air it comes to enter the air free heater where the air gets heated the hot air like this it enters and it comes to the bottom side and it enters in the fire grate so it enters the fire grate it is a hot air enters the fire grate instead of entering directly from the atmosphere to the fire grate the air first it sent to the air free heater air free heater means air before entering the fire gate it is heated so that is the functioning of air free heater so the the purpose of the air free heater is to increase the efficiency of the boiler some percentage of efficiency can be increased by using the air free heater here right so now remember from the feed water with high pressure i'll explain once again in the feed water means here we are using the pump with the high pressure water enters here enters means enters the economizer in the economizer again there is the exchange of the heat takes place because the economizer is placed so on the way of the flue gases so it gets heated the exchange of the heat takes place the amount uh, so it gets converted into a steam or you can say so partially the wet steam it gets converted into a wet steam so again it is stored in the storage and separated drum so it may not be a separated steam but it is a wet steam so it is stored in the storage and separated drum again from this storage drum so again it down corner so down comer so there is a circulating pump is used with the help of the circulating pump again you are using the forced water through the distributing header to the combustion chamber so in the combustion chamber again it enters in the zigzag fashion so that is called as evaporator so evaporator means where water gets evaporated in a convection fashion so again that is again it enters the storage and separated drum where the steam and water gets separated here in the storage drum so only the steam whether it may be a wet steam or dry steam it enters once again the superheater so in the case of superheater again there is the exchange of heat takes place so wherein it is completely converted into a superheated steam that superheated steam you can extract in the main steam so this is extract then that can be used for the further applications so this is the working of la mount boiler now we'll see what are the advantages of la mount boilers so la mount boilers can generate 45 to 50 tons of superheated steam at a pressure of 120 bars and temperature of 500 degrees celsius this is the one more advantages of it right it can generate 45 to 50 tons of superheated steam at a pressure of 120 bars right at a pressure of 120 bars look at the pressure here so the atmospheric pressure itself is around one atmosphere so it is almost 120 times the atmospheric pressure so the steam is generated here look at the temperature is also 500 degrees celsius then drum is of a small size the drum what you are using here it is a very small in size when comparing to the low pressure boilers right then the tendency of scale formation is eliminated due to forced circulation of water as i told you already so this is one of the advantages of all high pressure boilers so that is the tendency of scale formation is eliminated so as i said there is the impurities so or the sedimentations are present in the water it gets deposited on the inner surface of the tubes in the low pressure boilers so that can be eliminated here in this case because the water is circulated with a high pressure then some disadvantages are there so the disadvantages are bubbles are formed on the inside of the water tubes and these bubbles reduce the heat transfer rate right since there is no uh, drum is used here so directly the water gets converted into a steam in the pipe itself so the water is starts boiling in the pipe only so when it starts boiling so then definitely there is a bubble formation takes place so that bubble formation takes place inside the water tubes so these bubbles reduce the heat transfer so these bubbles can reduce the transfer of heat there in the pipes so the initial and operating costs are high initial and operating costs are very high so that is one more disadvantage maintenance costs are very high even the maintenance cost is also a very high so that is the one more disadvantages of the lamont boiler so thank you that is the end of session 5